Good evening, everybody. How you guys doing? Oh, so good to be here. Man, you guys are excited. We want to welcome you here to the Father's house. My name is Pierre. We are so thankful that you are here. Now, before we start, I want you to know that it, the parking lot is, is filling up. The cars are driving in. If you are keeping any seats and you are certain those people are coming, you can keep those seats just for a little bit. If you are praying still that they are coming, you've got to give the seats up. I'm going to encourage you to move in because we know that people are beginning looking for seats tonight. It is Wednesday night, and um, I'm sure some of you just drove straight from work, and work is still in your bones, everything, life rumbling on the inside of you. And so tonight what we're going to do is just everybody take a deep breath, just a deep, deep, deep breath here tonight. Blow it all out. Blow it all out. The bank doesn't know you here. Your landlord doesn't know you here. Your car payment doesn't know you here. Mother-in-law doesn't know you are here. Every Nobody knows you are here. It's you, Jesus, and all his kindness over your life. And so tonight here at the Father's house, we have been speaking on spiritual rituals, routines, and practices that people throughout all the ages practice daily. You know, these practices that shape and calibrated their hearts to love. It's not our minds that decide what we love. It's what we do that shapes what we love. And that's what shapes the journey we are on. And tonight the journey or the practice and the ritual is the beautiful practice of worship. Now, what is beautiful about worship, it is that it requires for us to be present. And for most of us, present is very hard because some of you are already on Instagram Live. I know some of you can't wait to show the world what's going on. But you know, I think if we have to tap into God's heart tonight, God can't wait for you just to be present with Him. For you to know that He loves you. For you to know that He knows all the cavities and the hairline fractures. He's already seen the worst of you in the future and he loves you unconditionally tonight. So tonight we are not worshiping to be accepted by God. We are worshiping out of a place of being accepted because our acceptance that God gives is not based on whether we act good, have no tantrums, get it right, read our Bible, pray. It's because he loved us even when he had no guarantees on our yeses. So tonight, out of that place, I want to encourage you to remember that our bodies are part of the act of worship. So tonight, when you choose to raise your hands, if that's okay with you, what you are really doing is embodying the act and the ritual and the routine of worship, literally is reaching out your hands to God in honor, submission, in need but tonight our desire is to make Jesus famous in this place because he's the only one that is worthy of unending praise in this place tonight he's the only one the only only one so even though we have guests tonight and you may be sitting next to a famous person I want you to know that there is no other one that is more important than Jesus you and us as his sons and daughters tonight so i'm going to encourage you i'm going to just pray for us and then we're going to create a moment to slow everything down before we pick everything up just for us right now father you promised that those who wait upon you you will renew their strength you already know and you're already mindful of our hearts of everything that's going on to the most finite of all details. You're a God that runs to us in our valleys. You're a God that runs to us in our mountains. You are God that runs to us in our drifting. You're a God that runs to us in our running. So tonight, I thank you that the spirit of acceptance and gathering is in this place. And as we begin to worship, may our hallelujahs 
join the hallelujahs that is around your throne. May we as a people come as one to make your name great, Jesus. So Holy Spirit, would you just settle every heart? Holy Spirit, would you cause us to be present in this moment tonight? That even if we don't know the words, we don't know the songs, that we will just rest in the grace of God that is more than enough. So right where you're sitting, just breathe deep and know that this is a well and a time of refreshing for us tonight.
your voice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, just sing it one more time. Oh, let your heart rest and say, oh. for Jesus tonight. Say, oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> if the Lord's been good to you, say, oh, oh, oh. It's a sweet spirit of Jesus in this place tonight. Now what I would love for you to do is just fist bump the people around you and say, I need room. You can tell. I need room tonight. I need room. Because tonight, you're going to use your shower voice to make great the name of Jesus. And it's our absolute privilege tonight to welcome to the stage Chandler and Chris from Maverick City Music. Come on!
distractions silence the thoughts Holy Spirit you be the focus
We love the name of Jesus. We love the name of Jesus. You have no rival. And you have no stronger name but the name of Jesus would you lift up a shout of praise in this room I'm talking about the name that pulled you out of addiction I'm talking about the name that gave you salvation I'm talking about the name that healed your body of cancer I'm talking about the name that healed your mind from depression it's the name of Jesus it breaks every chain it breaks every chain Somebody shout for the name of Jesus. It's starting to feel like church in here. It's starting. <laughs> I don't think we should gather and not appreciate the thing that gives us our foundation, which is the name of Jesus. I think it's, it's, it's one of the main things that separate us from other religions. Some trust in Buddha, some trust in Muhammad, some trust in Allah. But we have a name that's above every other name. I don't want to offend anybody, but you're in the house of the Lord. We have a name that's above every other name. <laughs> I don't know what Buddha does for those people, but our name heals us. I mean, it saves us, it delivers us. It's a name we can call on and it responds every time. It's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. Woo! For the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous we can run in 
His name is a safe tower for us. <laughs> it's where we can hide and be safe. I want you to do so. I just want you to touch your neighbor. Say, are you ready to praise the Lord? If y'all can do this, can y'all come down to, if you want to come down to the altar, the altar is open. Can I open the altar, Pastor? We're just going to praise the Lord as radically as we can, as possible. Come on, let's flood the altar. We're going to sing a whole bunch of songs tonight. So I'm going to teach y'all this chorus really quick. Speaking about the names of our Father. I'm sorry, I didn't properly greet y'all. What's up, Rochester, New York? The team was making fun of me in the back. I was like, am I in Chile? Where am I? I'm like, no, it's not Chile. Sorry. Chai Lai. I'm so happy to be here. Y'all's pastors, I'm, excuse my, my slang, y'all pastors are so dope. Y'all pastors are just some of the dopest pastors I've ever met. They walked in the room. I'm like, what do I have on? I need to go back to the hotel. They so fly. I love y'all so much. This feels like home already. It's my first time here. It feels so much like home. I feel the presence of the Lord here. It's crazy, man. All right, let's, let's worship the Lord a little bit longer. We got about three hours to go ham, okay. <laughs> You'll be out by 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> All right, let's teach a uh, quick chorus real quick. Here we go. One, two, this is what it says. Yahweh, Yahweh, be praised. Yahweh, I got that song said, say. Yahweh, hey, Yahweh. 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 One more time, just a vocal. Yahweh, say Yahweh. 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 Be Yahweh. Hey. Yahweh. Yahweh. Be Here we go. Yahweh. I want to sing the verse. That's what it says. Yeah. He is holy. And reigns with splendor, our God, Yahweh, sovereign King, full of wonder, our God, Yahweh. Here go your part right here, Yahweh. Hey, yeah. Hey, it says none can describe him or compare to him. I got what's his name, Chuck?
the King, yours is the glory, our God, Yahweh, be all the glory, now and forever, our God, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh.
14-day fast. Are y'all starting off strong? Are you <laughs> Are you doing good on your fast? Are you? <laughs> Some of us get in the middle of fast, be like, okay, I think I'm gonna rethink this. <laughs> but what a thing I love about the Lord is that we don't fast to uh, perform out of out of some type of I'm gonna do this, and then you're gonna do this. We don't, that's not why we fast. We fast to be close, to draw near, to be more aware, to be more aware and more sensitive of what the Lord is doing in a season in our lives. Um, and, and one thing that fasting personally does for me, it realigns uh, my why and my motive. It realigns and it, it actually reveals what's actually in your heart <laughs> under all the church going like what like what fasting does is yeah come to church and checking off your attendance is cool but when you get home turning down your plate and having to pray instead of eating in that hour <laughs> it reveals something in your heart that you're like whoa I didn't know I didn't know that bitterness was still there or I didn't know that that anger was still there I didn't even know that I still desired this when I was just busy, but I really still desire a lot of that. Um, and that's what fasting does. And one story that comes to mind um, about the heart of fasting that many don't connect with, for me it makes sense, is the prodigal son. And though a lot of us may not outwardly be running from the Father, in our hearts there are spaces where we have become the prodigal. Where we have abandoned, or even to be a little deeper, can I go a little deep tonight? Where we have asked for things prematurely, like the prodigal did. The, pro the prodigal, he wanted his inheritance early, but he wasn't ready for it. Uh, so what the sensitivity and the awareness of fasting will do, it'll sober you up. Like, in my instance, there are some platforms I'm just not ready for. It'll sober you, like, okay, yeah, I want to play wild, wild prayers, but I want to play, pray timely prayers as well. I don't want to rush before it's my time, before it's my time to get that promotion because my character just doesn't line up yet. And I, Okay, I'm talking to myself tonight. But fasting, if you haven't gotten there yet, fasting will unveil all of that in your heart. Um... And there's a song tonight that is a new song that I want to do tonight that'll uh, hopefully speak to the heart of what this, where this church is and what the Lord is going to do. Y'all ready? All right, let's go a little deeper. And 
past the temporary. I hear you beckoning me to fall a little deeper, further than I've ever known.
Son, the story of the prodigal son, I'm going to say this and we're going to move, is if you read the story, this is, makes me want to cry, so I may bust out crying like a little baby up here, but this, this really makes me want to cry. If you read the story, when, when the prodigal son came back to his senses, the Bible says, when he came back to his senses, he was preparing a speech to go back to his father's house. I could just imagine him looking in the mirror like, all right, this, this is what we're going to say. I know I did this. I know I did this. Would you please I just come back? And he was willing to come back as a slave, though he was a son. You'll catch that about 8 o'clock when you get home. He was willing to come back as something lesser than he was. And that's sometimes a lot of us, when you deal with shame and condemnation, you allow the lie of the enemy to tell you that you are what you did. Because he was hanging out with pigs, so somewhere in his mind, he believed that he deserves a pig's place. <laughs> he was willing to come back as a slave, though he was the son of a king. And the part that blesses me is that the Bible says, as the son was going back home, the father was not just sitting, he wasn't just sitting on a porch just chilling, waiting for him to show up the bible says that the father began to run to the son too and let me tell you why that blesses me because if you if you really study your bible in jewish customs kings the father was a king kings don't run i'm gonna say it again in in his custom as a king he wasn't supposed to be running so what it shows is that God will break the box of normality. When you decide that you are holding your son and you're ready to come back to the Father as broken, as stink, as dirty as you are. When you're decided, the Father's not just going to sit up in heaven like, all right, I'm going to just wait for you to come up here. The Father is madly in love with you. And he's running to meet you wherever you're willing to meet him. Is anybody in this room grateful for the love of a perfect father? He's not just your average father. He's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. So we're going to say this one more time. Let's build it. Let's say it. Say, here I come running. Here I come running. Run. Say it. Here I come running. Run. Let's say it. Here I come That type of gospel, the religious don't really like that type of gospel. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, they wouldn't really like that. Because it's a gospel of grace, Pastor. Pastor, it, it literally preaches that you can be in the mud one day, dirty as can be. And the moment you decide you want to come out of the mud, there's a father who's... There's a father who's willing and ready to meet you right where you are. If you've experienced the love of that father, would you give that good, good father a great sound of praise in this room? Because he rescued you. He rescued you. He rescued you. One more time, church. Say, here I come. Here I come running, running. Here I come running. running. Say it. Yeah. Here I come. No, I won't look back. 
after you're finished doing with us what you do on this fast. And we won't look back, no, we won't look back. Yeah, yeah. I feel that in the room. Some of y'all have convinced yourselves out of the love of God because of things you've done, things you found yourself in. Somehow in your mind, you allowed the enemy to convince you that you got to do all this work to get back to the love of the Father. That's not the kind of God that we serve. It's a gospel that preaches that you come as dirty as you are. You come as jacked up as you are, as depressed as you are, as so much in your sin as you are. Your job is to come. His job is to clean. Your job is to come. His job is to clean. So would you just lift your hands? I want to just pray a prayer. Father, I pray that in this room, that if there is any seed, any hint any spirit of guilt, shame, or condemnation, that you break it now by the power of your name. Father, you said that therefore is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And because we are alive, because we are sons and daughters in you, because you have called us your own and adopted us, shame, guilt, condemnation have no place. So Father, deliver a supernatural freedom in this room tonight that kicks out the lies of the mistakes, the lies, hey, of the errors, the lies of the missteps and the bad decisions, Father. Woo, make us aware that we are sons and daughters. Hallelujah. That we are sons and daughters. That our identity is in Christ, not in our mistakes. Our identity is in Christ, not in our errors. Our identities in Christ, not in that addiction, not in that depression, Woo. not in those drugs, not in that fornication. Our identity is in Christ. And you have called us your own. And we won't look back, no, we won't look back. We're not slaves to fear. We're not slaves to guilt. We're not slaves to shame. We're sons and we're daughters. We're sons and we're daughters. Come on, receive the sonship of the Lord. We're sons and we're daughters. You're not what you did. You're not where you've been. You're a son and you're a daughter. You're a son and you're a daughter. Ooh. There's no shame in him. There's no guilt in him. The blood is washed away. All of your sins just come to him. Just come to him. Just come to him. So clean my hands, purify my heart. I want to burn for you, only for you. Take my life. Yeah. 
in your mouth. Come on, pray your own prayers. Father, purify us. We are your children. Clean us. Refine us. Whatever it is that you want to do, do it with us, Father. Do it with us, Father. We open up our hearts to you in this moment. Do it with us, Father. dangerous prayer. It's a dangerous prayer when we say, like a mighty storm stir within my soul. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Yeah. I surrender one time. I
think is so important in our churches that we be like Mary and not like Martha. A lot of times we can be so busy, such in a rush, such in a hurry, that even those of us who serve in ministry, and I don't know why I sense that this night is, a, is really for a lot of you who serve hard in ministry, don't get a chance to breathe. I can feel that weight, that like there are a lot of you, even from other churches, who have come tonight just to breathe, just to inhale and exhale. But sometimes we can get so busy. Martha was cooking for Jesus that she missed to be at the feet of Jesus. She was doing so much for him that she forgot to be with him. While Mary was at his feet, worshiping and listening and just abiding with him. The Bible says Martha was too busy trying to prepare a meal. There's so, so much so she was trying to prepare for him that she missed him. That she missed him. And every time we enter into these doors, it's not so that we can just be religious, man. It's so that we can continue the Monday through Saturday of abiding at his feet. There's no safer place. There's no sweeter place for the believer. There's no clearer place. A lot of us lack clarity because we for abandon his feet. There's no clearer place. And one thing I desire, only this I seek, just to dwell dwell, dwell here forever and this will be my posture laying at your feet oh just to dwell dwell, dwell here forever this is who he is Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful, you are. Dearest Father, closest friend. Only this I see Just to dwell, dwell, dwell Here forever This will be my posture Laying at your feet Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell Here forever Let's say loud, church. Dearest Father, closest friend, closest friend, most beautiful. Talk about his presence. Most beautiful. Dearest Father, dearest Hallelujah. Father, you're my closest friend. Closest friend. You are most beautiful. Beautiful, most beautiful, most beautiful. 
worship you. We can't describe your mercies. There are no words to describe your grace. There are no words to describe your mercy. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
pray all over this room that you give us eyes to see you. Father, I pray that more than we need 2020 vision, we need eyes to see the Father. Father, open up the eyes of our heart. Open up the eyes of our spirits. Open up the eyes of our souls. Remove the blindfolds. Remove the blinders. Remove the blinding. Let us see you. Let us see you. Let us see you in all of your glory, in all of your splendor, in all of your majesty, in all of your might. We want to see you like Isaiah saw you, high and lifted up, and the glory of the Lord, and the train filled the temple. Let your glory, hey, let your glory fill the room. Let your glory fill the room. Let your glory fill the room. Let your glory.
this house of worship. I thank you that I sense you smiling over this house and these leaders. I thank you for the pleasure that you have with them. I thank you for this night. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. You are everything. You are everything. Thank you for your presence. I thank you that there's healing in your presence. I thank you that all manners of disease, that by faith, any pain people have had, any sicknesses, because your presence was here tonight, because your presence is here, that you heal bodies even in this moment, that you heal broken souls, that you heal broken families, broken minds, Ooh, that you deliver us out of the hand of the enemy, deliver us from addiction, deliver us from any manner of issues, Father. Let your deliverance be in the room. Let your love be in the room. Let your grace and your mercy, not just in in this room, but as we go home and continue in communion with you, be with us, Father. Be with us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence. I believe part of what God wants to always shape in us is hearts that deeply love Jesus. And that's what you experienced here tonight. And part of what he reminds us constantly is that doesn't, he doesn't want generosity from us, but he wants generosity for us. Because when we give, it shapes what we love. And tonight, part of this, and I'm going to ask Chandler if they can sing the chorus of this song. Oh, it's my favorite song. I've got this on endless repeat. Endless repeat. That out of this posture of saying, God, there is no one like you, we're going to give to God. And we're going to give towards what God is doing through Chandler and Chris and Maverick City Music. Because... As you and I have experienced in life, God has a unique way to breathe fresh wind that just touches so many lives. And tonight we're going to just put our support behind that wind to keep blowing, to keep stirring us into new places. Now, there are many ways that you can give, and I think we have a slide for that you can give electronically. You don't have to give tonight. 
Because I want to remind you again, God doesn't want money from us. He wants generosity for us. Because when we give, it's part of our worship. So I'm going to ask the ushers if you want to get ready. And we're just going to receive our generosity as part of our worship. Because I'm going to ask that they just sing the chorus of the song. While we worship God with our generosity. And say, God, where I give, may it shape my love for you, your kingdom, and the expansion of that kingdom right here on the earth. Thank you, Ashes. Saturday, we have made room at our venue. Every Saturday, we as a church pray, pray for the God of the heavens to make habitation among us like tonight. And on Saturday, I'm going to be praying baby steps into learning how to pray. Because prayer is not automatic. It is a language and it's a journey of learning. So when you Get on your knees and you pray, and two minutes later you have nothing to say. I want to invite you to come on Saturday at 9 o'clock at our chapel across the street. And I would love to lead you into a journey for you to develop a beautiful language to grow in your prayer. Because there is nothing more potent than connects us to the very presence and the power of God that invades our world like prayer. And then on Sunday, we're going to continue with our series. Now, if you hear from another church, do not show up to church here on Sunday. Go to your church that God has planted you. Know that we support and celebrate what God is doing for all the pastors that are here. Know the Father's house deeply love you and support you and are so thankful that you are planted and declaring the beautiful news of Jesus in our city because we have a vested interest for God to visit Rochester again and he is doing that and next Wednesday night we have another one of these we have a guest worship leader he was Pastor Jensen Franklin's worship leader uh, his name is Rory and he's going to be here and it's another night where we just going to practice the, the, the spiritual journey of making Jesus great. Wasn't tonight amazing? Can we thank Chandler? Can we thank Chris? Oh, I love these guys. Stinking love these guys. Love them, love them, love them, love them. And I'm gonna ask that we do Yahweh. Yeah. Oh, I love you so much. It's like I've known him. It's like I've known him. You've got to understand how excited I am. I've been pastoring this church for 20 years. And when I see these beautiful young men, God is raising up. I, you've no idea. And there's many of you in this place like that. You have no idea. It feels like I've done my job. It feels like God 
it's not going to stop with anybody you are raising up and your kingdom are rumbling forward with greater power you have no idea how that excites me oh it is so awesome and we are so thankful i said to my wife when i met you guys it's like my cousins i don't know why my cousins it's like it's like they belong here it's so awesome thank you so much for saying yes and god was kind to you he gave you no snow yeah you came into beautiful warmth but you represented the heart of god in a spectacular way tonight may your journey be untainted with those who want to buy you those who want to label you those want to accelerate you but will take from you what is so beautiful so pure may this very raw seeking and living in god's presence rest on you may what god has positioned in you stay barbaric stay untainted stay unmanicured may you be free from the expectation of people for when you stay in that place god will continue to rekindle fires in places that holds the form but they've lost the heart oh so father i pray that your son will have such just an anointing and an oil that all the agendas will fly by him pass past him father that he will not sell this birthright for anything and i declare father with our people no good thing will you withhold father that in the place of pausing he will stay deeply confident that the dream you've placed in his heart shall not be overdue a single day you bless your sons coming and going and sitting and standing father oh and may he feel the love of this house that was deeply impacted by the work of heaven in him that is my prayer tonight in jesus name amen come on send us away with yahweh come on let's go y'all let's say he is holy and reigns with splendor oh god you know it by now say yeah he's sovereign king full of wonder oh god what's his name y'all yahweh, yahweh. Oh, come back.